Hi, so um, I, uh, as, as FIO mentioned, my name is Yvonne Ng. I manage the archives program at Witness. It's really great to be here, um, to be part of this Keep It On community and to be learning from all of my um, fellow co-presenters. Um, so today I'm here to um, share some tips um, from a series that we published um, last year on our blog um, called Documenting During Internet Shutdowns. Um, and just so to provide some context, um, so my organization, um, Witness, is focused on supporting activists who are using video to document um, human rights abuses for advocacy and evidentiary purposes. Um, we partner with grassroots organizations to support their video advocacy campaigns. We provide training, um, we develop training materials um, on how to use video for human rights documentation. Um, and we also advocate to technology platforms to ensure that human rights um, considerations are built into all of those video systems that we all use um, every day. So obviously, um, internet shutdowns, you know, introduce all kinds of logistical challenges for doing documentation and video documentation, since it becomes a lot harder to manage and share content, um, as well as the, you know, it, the increased security risks that come um, with shutdowns. So we developed this series um, to provide very practical very accessible advice to video documenters who find themselves in, in shutdown situations. Um, and, it's, and, and this guidance is based on the needs and the really creative strategies that we were hearing um, from our partners and our allies. Um, so the topics that we cover in the series, and which I'll be sort of running through some of the tips from today, um, include advice on setting up a phone for offline documentation, um, deciding how to choose um, what documentation apps um, are, are right for you. Um, maintaining verifiable media even during an internet shutdown. Backing up your phone media if you don't have internet or even a computer. And then file sharing and communication during a shutdown. So this guidance is currently available in multiple languages, uh, thanks in large part to some of our allies in the Keep It On um, Coalition. And we're really glad to see that the materials have resonated with a lot of people and, and very grateful um, in particular to SafeNet um, for the Bahasa Indonesia uh, version and uh, Net Freedom Partners and Small Media for the Farsi version. Um, besides those languages and the English, we also have Burmese, um, Arabic and Spanish versions, and I'm very glad uh, to say coming soon, an Urdu uh, version as well. So we can go on to the tips. Um, so preparing your phone for offline documentation. Um, you know, some things that can be done to prepare if you anticipate a uh, shutdown happening. Um, first of all, we, for security purposes, we advise people to use a separate phone from your own kind of everyday personal phone if you're doing documentation. Um, you know, obviously if, you're, if that phone, if your personal phone is confiscated and you're using it for documentation, you know, you can compromise a lot of your personal and sensitive information. And so use a, a separate phone as possible. You can use an old phone. Um, you can, to wipe it, you can encrypt and then factory reset um, to wipe all of your old data off of your off of that old phone. You know, always practice basic phone security. So um, you know, using screen lock, passcode, making sure you run the updates on your phone, um, turning off services like location um, and Bluetooth when you're not using them. Um, you know, if you're doing documentation, you might want to consider um, using some of those the specialized documentation apps that are out there. Um, they provide special features like secure galleries or enhanced metadata collection. They help have different features. Um, you can also prepare yourself to install apps such as these documentation apps um, offline and help others to install them while they're offline um, by downloading the Android packages or the APKs. Um, and saving them so that you can install or share with others later on when the internet is out. Um, some apps like F-Droid have an APK swap feature that um, makes it easier for you to swap um, APKs between devices offline. 
Um, to make your documentation phone less conspicuously in a documentation phone, you can also do some very superficial things like installing kind of everyday apps and putting them on your phone, using a launcher app to change your app icons and app names. Um, you can use private modes in your galleries, or you can use hidden folders um, in your storage. Um, but of course, uh, this only really protects, um, you know, very superficially, like if somebody is swiping through your phone to see what you have on there. Um, and then finally, the main point to emphasize in the sort of the preparing um, stage is, you know, no matter what apps you use, it's really important to practice and to try out to try and to practice uh, what you're going to be using before you're really in a real situation or crisis situation. So speaking of, um, you know, documentation apps, um, you know, for, for any app you're using, there are some questions that you can ask yourself to assess. Um, you know, their, their relative safety and appropriateness um, for your situation. Um, so some basic questions you can ask are, you know, who made the app and do I trust them? So are the developers reputable? Are they vulnerable for, you know, for any particular reason, such as, you know, where they're based? Um, do they actively maintain and update the app? Um, and what, what are the developers motivations for making the app or their business model? Um, another question is, where is the app downloadable from? So there, there are a lot of sketchy um, app stores that might lead you to download like imposter versions of, of apps that you think are trustworthy, um, but that actually have like nefarious kind of purposes. So it's good to only download from reputable um, stores. Um, third, uh, where will the data be stored? So depending on your risks or, and threats, you know, it might matter where your data gets transmitted and stored. So that's something to, to understand as well. Um, does the app encrypt my data? Um, so some apps um, provide separate encrypted storage on your phone, which can provide a, a, a level of extra protection, you know, even when your phone is unlocked. Um, however, you should also be aware of the laws around encryption wherever um, you are. Um, does the app capture metadata, even without internet? So something to be aware of is that, you know, some apps rely on internet access um, to capture accurate um, metadata, such as, say, location data. Um, so you want to check your app's documentation to understand what your what your metadata um, is, is telling you, and what you can what you can interpret from that metadata. And then finally, um, can I export data from the app? So depending on um, your needs and intentions for the documentation, it might be important uh, to you to be able to easily export your media and metadata out of the app. You know, either like individual videos or or, or in bulk. Um, so if that is important to you. Um, make sure to look into that um, before um, choosing an app. Okay, so maintaining verifiable media. You know, during shutdowns, it's obviously um, harder to upload and share your documentation right away. Um, and, and this lag um, can make it harder for users like human rights researchers or investigators down the line to verify and authenticate your video um, because it's you know, not published um, at that exact moment. Um, the chain of custody might become longer and more convoluted depending how you're sharing it. Um, there might be less other documentation out there to corroborate yours because of the shutdown. So a few simple things um, that we advise that people can do to make the verification process easier for others later on um, are to um, you know, film or narrate uh, actual details in, your, in the video itself. So um, it, details that show the time, the date, and the location, you know, such as a phone face, a newspaper, unique landmarks, geographical features, that, that kind of thing. Um, you can also um, collect descriptive information or metadata, you know, apart from narrating it or filming it in the video itself, such as by using like a specialized documentation app, like I mentioned, or you can also just do it through um, taking notes on your phone, you know, saving other documentation on your phone along with your videos. And then finally, uh, and we'll go into this in the next slide a bit more, backing up your media is uh, really important in case anything happens to your phone, you want to be still able to access and provide a copy of that original video that you shot, let's say to a journalist or to an investigator um, later on. So backing up um, without an internet or a computer, you know, backing up is always um, really important. 
Um, but it's extra important to be conscious of this during an internet shutdown because, well, first of all, your automatic cloud um, backups might not be working. Um, and then there also might be extra risk um, to, to, your, to you or to your media during these times. If you have a computer um, backup, it, it's a lot easier to backup. Um, but even if you don't, there are uh, many options. So a, an OTG or on the go drive can plug directly um, into your phone. Um, you could also use a wireless drive. And what's great about wireless drives is that they can be used by multiple devices at once. Um, if you don't have these drives or can't access them, you can also back up to another phone. Um, so trans transferring files by pairing the phones um, using um, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi Direct or apps that use um, Bluetooth like Google Files. Um, but whatever you know, method that your device that you use, um, it's important to at minimum password protect your storage device. Um, you might additionally consider encrypting the files, um, you know, using something like 7-zip, um, although you don't know, keep in mind, you know, the risks of, of, of that encryption, like you need to be able to decrypt them later on. Um, having one backup is really essential and important. Uh, the ideal is having two backups. So the, the, the three, two, one mnemonic that's used in like the IT world, you know, refers to having uh, three copies total. So your, your original and then two backups on at least two uh, storage media and with at least one in a separate physical location than the other copies. And so finally, and I'm going to spend less time talking about this because I think Gustav is going to talk about circumvention me uh, methods. So I won't address those at all. Um, but in terms of file sharing and communication, um, there are ways that you can share files um, without internet as well. Um, so you can use uh, the peer-to-peer -peer tools like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi Direct, which I mentioned earlier, and apps that incorporate um, those technologies like Google Files. Um, just you know, make sure to turn uh, use them safely and then turn them off when you're when you're done. Um, as I mentioned, you can, you know, you can use OTG drives and, you know, physically exchange drives or share wireless drives. Um, if you don't have a wireless drive, another thing you can do is to use a wireless router. Most people have them in their houses. So you can plug a drive into your wireless router and then connect your phone to the local network. Um, and you can use like any file manager app that supports, um, that connects to network storage. Um, for instance, Solid Explorer is, is one that does that and you can connect to the drive via your router that way. Um, we've heard that some people are using some of these newer apps like Bridgeify and Briar, um, P2P peer-to-peer -peer apps, although we haven't used them ourselves. Like we have heard that uh, many people using them. Um, so yes, yeah, so there are still ways to share information um, even when you can't get on the internet. So just in closing, um, you know, besides this guidance, we're continuing to keep our eyes open on internet shutdowns and how they impact um, human rights video documenters. Um, so I just wanted to point to a couple of um, uh, blog posts, for example, coming from my colleagues on our Witness Africa team um, when talking about uh, sh uh, shutdowns during Ugandan elections, and then more recently um, in Nigeria, the, the Twitter block. So, um, you know, I, I, I hope that we can continue to, to learn and create an update our resources to be timely, relevant, and accessible, um, to be part of spaces like this, to be able to learn and share more. Um, and of course, we always like welcome um, feedback and thoughts from, from all of all the, this whole um, community. And here's our contact information to get in touch. Thanks.